orders received. Mission is a go. Lord Vader won't accept defeat. No. Mission. Audio check. I need a weapon. I need a weapon. I do that audio check. I need a weapon. Jack. Jack. I need a weapon. Okay. Hang over there. How's it? Hang this. Uh. How's it, Ingle? Welcome to Mongoose Max Hawaii. The champ. Oh, my cum link. Uh, okay. Welcome. I'm still alive. Yay for me. Uh, it's December 9th. Oh my gosh. It's, um, it's, uh, it's early in the morning and, uh, oh. Let's make this shirt. Uh, uh, yeah. I'll tell you. Hey, it's, it's a. Mm. Uh, Hawaiian for coffee. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> Made this batch a little on the weak side. Mm. Still good. Okay, so of course there's lots going on in the news. Let's start off with the weather. The good stuff is that stupid storm, or whatever it was. It kind of like was coming up, like this thing was coming down and this thing was coming down, and they went together, and, and the stuff came up from the south, and it was just oh. And December seventh was just catastrophic downpour. We broke all records except for 1958 with 15 inches of water in 1958. We got seven and a half inches, which is like all time record except for 58. They just struck up the power downtown Honolulu. They turned on their power. I didn't know their power was out. <laughs> Jeez. And uh, things are gonna be drying up. And. It was like this flooded. I, I saw a worm in my toilet. That's just creeping me out. It's like this little freaking thing. I'm like, oh my god. I think it came up from the sewer because it became a cesspool. Anyways, <laughs> good morning. <laughs> There's other stuff in the news. Is Bob Dole's laid in state, if you see this thing up here. And, uh, and they're saying stuff like, hey man, he's gonna be the poster lay in state person for bipartisan unison unity yeah <laughs> this one says like yeah back in the day when Bob Dole and Democrats and uh, Republicans worked together more better and back in those days so he's still he's like he just quips and yeah it's a eulogy for Bob Dole and a eulogy for back in those days mm. So whether that happens, I don't know. They just use an uh, a funeral for political stuff. I was watching the little funeral. I don't know if it shows in the thing. There's like people walking by and they're saying, "Yeah, and there's still contention between the parties." And there's one of these guys. I don't know, representatives. He sees a. They're like walking through. You know, this is in the rotunda, and the, the coffin is right there with the flag on it. And he, he sees somebody he knows, and he's like. Does one of these things? Who does that? Who does that at a funeral? What the? Uh, well, anyways, yeah, he's just lying in state. <laughs> he gosh. And uh, the Omicron's all over the place, except that uh, they're not sure if it's just mild. If you got a couple, if you got both doses in the booster. You're pretty good to go. I would not want to catch that. I do not think <sighs> those long-term secondary symptom things. No way. I go by. Speaking of medicine, man, I'm just like, I'm just like, eh. I got a good night's sleep. 
good to go and stuff like that, but I still like real slow. This is like day two out of the OR kind of deal. And, uh, and I go by my friend, Marguerite. God bless you. I don't know me. Uh, her, her contention was, and she knew doctors left and right, and her son's a doctor. And I'm going by her contention of that, you know, the anesthesia, which is actually very dangerous and they don't know how it works. But you come out of anesthesia in the recovery room and they tell you, breathe deep <sighs> to exhaust it out of your system. And then you're kind of awake enough to stand and pee or something like that. And they go, okay, you can go to another room. Uh, and then they can release you and they wheel you out in a, they wheel you out in a, a wheelchair with the wheels. And uh, they always do that, even if you can walk. They say, wheel you yeah. out. It's cautious because you never know. It kind of hits in. It's like, woo. And, uh, uh, but the contention is that that stuff lingers about for like six months to be like cleansed. You have to cl purposely cleanse yourself. And I'll tell you what, man, I I'm going off, off script here, but, uh, there, that was in there. I'm gonna probably interject with these little hospital stories. I got notes that I haven't even unpacked. But I was in the recovery room, and, I, and you can hear everything else going on. You just get this little curtain, and it's like, you know, you can hear everything. And they brought this other guy out. I couldn't see him. He's over there somewhere, and uh, he wasn't waking up from the anesthesia, which was OMG. And they were getting their little code team was kind of accumulating. They're like, okay, wake up. And what you hear them say is, wake up, wake up. That's what got my attention. Wake up, wake up. Okay, wake up, wake up. I kept saying, wake up, wake up. And breathe, you know, breathe, wake up, wake up. That's what I'll say. And then, uh, she, the guy wasn't breathing. And then his doctor finally came in, the surgeon guy. They started talking to her, like, okay, da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -da -ba. and she recognized her brain, recognized her doctor's voice, and, and the brain listened to that voice, and she started to breathe, because they were just about to intubate her, and put the tube down. This is very interesting stuff. It affects the brain. So, not my fault if this goes wrong, eh? <laughs> just kidding okay in the news too is the red hill stuff oh oh one more thing daniel k Inouye, which was a senator guy he was world war ii lost his arm shook hands with kennedy with the left hand i suppose and was senator for the longest time in honolulu did lots of stuff for hawaii but some stuff is like hmm depends you know i figured but anyhow the longest time here and he passed away a few years back they renamed the honolulu international airport after him i think they're going to rename a highway after him and then they dedicated a destroyer a destroyer first class ship came in and this is the day after oh oh can't go this way you gotta go this way gotta scroll this thing up the enduring legacy there's his pizza and the destroyer the uss Hanoi. Inoi. I would make fun and say annoying. <laughs> He's been, he was like there so long, man. He was there so long. So they did the thing with the big boom things because they did that on December 8th because they couldn't do it on December 7th, right? You get the ship coming. They brought the ship in on December 7th. They start blowing off guns with all these 90-year-old <laughs> survivors of Pearl Harbor. They're going, boosh, boosh. it's happening again. So they did it the day later and stuff like that. Okay, that's what that story is. And uh, but the uh, insidious one is you see the picture right there. You see the picture, the tunnel. The Navy, right? The Navy cannot do it. No more time. They were gonna bring their lawyers in. Deny. We deny. We deny this stuff. You can no longer deny because their shafts are getting polluted with the contamination. So the Navy shafts are polluted, so they have to shut down theirs. And everybody in the community, not talking like this. Wait, let's go back here. Change scene, side side. Okay, 
they're going to take to a lawyer. The navies are going to contest the order to shut down. And there's like, oh no, and protesters. But then all these communities are starting to get sick, and they have to shut down the water because the people are getting sick. And then it's extended, and these other wells they find out are more, are more twice the amount, you know, acceptable, and, and, and they have to shut down. And everyone's getting sick, so so there's no way they can kind of go. Oh, I don't think we're going to obey your order because everybody it's like it's too late you blew it everybody's getting sick like in this one area and we don't know how big it's going to spread so everyone's like oh my god the aquifer's been tr trashed it's trashed in that site uh, in that area the aquifer's trash right now unless they can find a way to clean it up how do you how do you take uh fuel out of water right underground and so oh man it is like unbelievable and the bottled water people oh boy we're selling lots of bottled water there's a bottled water company i seen it because i've been up halava valley we're driving around checking out the uh red hill thing and there's a company i'm not going to name the company because i don't want to because their sales might drop well from one person who watches hi my viewers love ya like and subscribe if you haven't when you watch this uh so halava valley and guess who else who drills for water down there a bottled water company so they're getting bottled water from that area too so be careful what brand you buy and get your booster <laughs> go, to, go to bed early <laughs> oh gosh Good night. Good night, everybody. Back in the day. All right, here we go. What the heck is this? I don't know. Shoot. I got the I got the paper, but uh, uh, I can only <laughs> handle too many moving parts. Okay, 1954. These, these guys are looking at one fish. Cora Cara Chara. Cora Chara. Boat operator. George Paca assisted commercial fisherman Floyd da Dreyer. I Dwyer. What the names? Measures a flexible pectoral fin on his catch. A 1,002 pound marlin, largest fish ever caught with rod and reel in the islands in 1954. <laughs> hey, look at the pectoral fin. That's the side fin. Okay. Next. Okay, we did that. Uh, we're gonna go sloshing about here. There's a guy. Ah, I bounced the ball off my head. Okay, good for you. This guy, I'm running. Oh, here comes the Honolulu Marathon this Sunday. Oh joy! Oh boy! Yay! This is sports. I guess it's the marathon. Yeah, Running Man. This guy. I'm 57, and I'm gonna run. I'm gonna win the run the sub marathon, and I'm aging fast. Okay. I'll tell you what, man. You know those old old geezer ones that are going. It's yeah, growing old. Ain't for so. Ain't for wussies. Like. <laughs> Yeah, man. Oh boy. I got to, okay, now what? Okay, okay. Now I gotta. I'm oh, sorry. I gotta reload the thing because they're getting the power on, and everyone's looking at these. I gotta do this. Not, oh man. What now? Okay. Story time. Uh, a little bit. So um, yeah. Uh, I tell you, recovery. You gotta watch every little thing, man. Move slowly. Watch them stitches, and I got things and. I got a follow appointments. <sighs> but you know they they that breathe, man. Breathe deeply on purpose. Get some deep breaths in there. Get some good stuff. Get some oxygen. Okay, here we go. Legacy. Oh boy, here we go. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's all you okay. The other way. Oh right, yeah, other way. One more time. See what's in the political uh, uh cartoon, eh? Get some of these things. Yeah, the political cartoon. Hey. When out on the roof, the rose such a clatter, and it's Putin in his tanks. Yeah, he's like, hey, get out of Ukraine, you. Uh, das Vidanya, the. Uh. Oh, man. See, Ukraine wants to be part of the UN, and Russia does not want Ukraine part of the UN. R Russia wants, I think there's oil in Ukraine, and they want reserves, and they're hungry for money. And they brought their tanks out. Okay. Oh, what do we got here? 
Back in Letters to the Editor. Are we on the right page here? I'm probably on another page. Oh. Oh, so you never got to see the thing, eh? Oh, too late. Too late for you. Oh, shit. Oh, no. What do I do? Oh, you got to see me do all that stupid. It's like, shut up. Shut up. There it is right there, okay? Ta da I rolled such a clatter. All right. Now we're doing this. <laughs> what, the heck? what the heck happened? Oh, now I'm blowing it. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Okay. Time for a for next big storm. Yeah, is that? Oh, gosh. Our view? Wait, we don't want a view. We want this. Ah, uh, Blazedale's the only place that I'm trying to figure out. Okay, we've got time for maybe one of these. Pick one real fast. <laughs> Replacing. <t> <laughs> yeah, when they replace those fuel tanks, they gotta they gotta take the fuel out of them. And that, if they don't blow it when you're doing that, Navy, please. We want to be proud of our Navy. We don't want you to be the big whatever. That's like the, something that a evil villain. You know, the terrorist evil villain, super villain. Let's poison the water supply. And the air supply, they'll have to wear masks. No air, no water. What's next? Federal funds needed to clear block streams. Okay. We got the streams. Aerial bombs. Okay, here comes uh, uh, New Year's. Choice Lee Eastwood Santa. Okay. Oh, and I got pop ups. Blah. Making your life confusing. Uh, Oh, deal with the devil. Okay, we'll go here. What the heck is that? Okay. Okay, are we on the right page? Okay, let's make sure we're, we got this thing going on here. Okay. Killing them both babies is deal with the devil. Okay, now this comes from because the abortion and world versus way. Don't forget all these important things that are happening all at once. So you turn your head and say, oh no, they overturned Roe versus Wade. And, I don't know. Personally, it comes down to me as like I'm, I'm Catholic, so obviously they're anti-abortion. So I'm supposed to go out there and go rah rah, overturn. But that's being a political Catholic. Now, uh, God and Jesus and all that. You're supposed to have your own choices. So free will is your choice, and with that becomes your responsibility. So you're responsible for your own choices. So people have to make their own choices. And just outlawing stuff is not choice promotive. So let's see what we have here. We're going to go a little over time, hopefully not too much. Killing unborn babies is a deal with the devil. A recent letter to the editor said that if the Supreme Court overturns Roe versus Wade, it would make a deal with the devil. Satan, I don't want you to go away. Jesus Christ, seriously. Satan, be gone. Uh, recent letter. Okay, uh, where are the hell are we? The, uh, Supreme, uh, letter to the editor. Okay, it's the main deal with the Women's right to decide. December 6th citation. A deal was already made with the devil when Congress was formed. <laughs> Oops, sorry. <laughs> when, when abortion was legalized. The letter went on to say that women will take matters into their own hands and many will die. Um, hmm. See, when it's legalized, you can go to people that can do it. Instead of if it's illegal, then you got the alley thing danger. So this is already kind of twisted. Well, what about the billions of babies whose lives have been taken and will be taken by abortions? Yes, women have the right to decide what to do with their own bodies, but not at the expense of the unborn. And then there's the theological question of when the baby has a, you know, soul or whatever, or power of choice, you know. So I don't know. To say that a baby born might suffer be being killed when going to a school is ridiculous. To say that a baby born might suffer being killed when going to school is ridiculous. That's not ridiculous. It was just guns in schools is kind of getting common. What the heck? What are the chances of that happening compared to certain death of a baby during abortion? Harold Nakagawa. Okay, thank you for your opinion. We value all the stuff you say and stuff like that. That's a big whopper, you know, but there's because it has theology. I mean, I'm into the Moses, you know, thou shalt not kill. 
but um, I don't know. I think people should be making their own choices instead of having a law about your choice because then it's not really a moral choice. What if it was illegal to be an atheist? Ooh. Or if it was legal to, well, whatever, you know, get it. Anyways, have a happy day. Water shafts are cut off, so I'm going to breathe the water in the air. <laughs> Just have a good day. And <laughs> it's Thursday. Time for a bye bye. Aloha. 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 Be nice to you. It's no matter.